This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. This is your weekly dose of techno lust. And I am so excited because we have drones. It's drone attack time. So, uh, actually, speaking of drones attacking things, I kind of heard that a drone might have attacked you in the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, luckily, I was wearing Google Glass, which protected my head. Oh, but yes. yes, you know it's what, a though? Today is payback. I'm yeah. taking down that Parrot AR. Are you? Okay, so this one's the Parrot AR Drone 2.0. I remember seeing this at CES. It's super easy to fly and everything, but what do you have over here with that gigantic remote? Well, okay, so this is another drone of, by a company called DJI, and this is the Vision Phantom. This is actually the Phantom 2 okay. now. And so uh, it's it's kind of a fun drone to fly because it's got a uh, camera here? on board and it's got a nice little gimbal that keeps the camera all oh, steady cool. and it's okay. GPS augmented so it just nice. hovers in the sky and That's it's awesome. it's really easy to fly and a great platform for doing all sorts of fun other nefarious things for later. And you have a Mark V on there, I see. That's what I did. I put a pineapple Mark V <laughs> on this guy because we are going to be taking it to the sky oh, and hacking gosh. some Wi-Fi. Two of my favorite things in it the world. Sounds amazing. Aviation and Wi-Fi hacking. Hacking with drones. Okay, so I, I know that this one pretty much connects to your cam or your cell phone, but how, how does how do these work? Well, you're right. Like uh, that's the beauty of the Para AR drone. It was one of the first kind of consumer-friendly drones yeah. that made it really easy as a toy yeah. for anyone to pick up. It's a very with, expensive toy, but th this is about I think I want to say it's about 300 bucks. 300? Yeah. Okay. yeah, and the idea is you connect it to your cell phone, whether that's Android or iOS, yeah. and then you can see the video camera on here, ah. and then you can like fly it around, and it's really easy, and it's got all sorts of cool sensors that make it stupid simple, and they've got this big cushy thing so you don't like, uh. you know, poke your eye out. Air Stop power. it. Stop. Ah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> And so, yes, that's very consumer uh, focused and also a lot of fun to hack with their SDKs and stuff. Uh, this guy's a little bit more pro. DJI makes a bunch of um, aerial videography platforms, but okay. the Phantom is really their kind of more consumer focused version. Cool. Uh, it's controlled over a 5.8 gigahertz. By a gigantic remote control. Yeah, I mean, compared to some, this is actually not that big. But yeah, it's, it's you know, by a traditional RC remote control. Right. And then the camera here on the gimbal is actually Wi-Fi relayed through this repeater here, and then what you do is you take your uh, cell phone here and clip it on with the oh, route. You can again cool. see what it sees and have that first person view experience. But both of these are consumer drones. Uh, that one at the low end at about 300, and this one at the high end at about $1,200. Whoa, so, okay. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Just a little But expensive. it has lifting capacity, so. We've strapped a uh, Wi-Fi. So I can hold Mark on to these to handles and it'll carry me away. No, not quite. Wow. It's it's carrying it. <laughs> uh, about 400 grams of pineapple and a uh, and a 18 hour 12 volt battery here for the pineapple juice. Okay. Well, I want to see this happen. Okay. So should we just take to the skies and let the ponage begin? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. So I have the AR Drone 2.0 right over here, and the first thing I need to do is go ahead and put in the battery pack so I can actually get it charged and powered. So, to do that, I simply take off the top, unhook this Velcro, and slide in the battery. I connect the two wires and Velcro back on. There we go, nice and tight. All of that should fit underneath the main body, and it just checked itself so it's ready and it's charged. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and open up the application. It's called AR Free Flight. So I'll click on that. And it'll take a few seconds to go ahead and get connected. I should be able to get into the Wi-Fi of the AR, AR drone. I'll be connected. I'll hit pilot on the application. And we're going to take off. So it should automatically start flying up to about three inches, or three feet above. And we have it going. Now I can power it backwards and forwards. Whee! To the side, right and left. And crash it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got our controller turned on. We have our Wi-Fi repeater up. We've got the uh, the Phantom up and operational now. In fact, I've connected to the network here. Very similar to the way the AR drone works is 
It's named Phantom underscore and then the last four of the MAC address. Over there, it's AR drone and then the last four of its MAC address. In fact, we did the same thing with the pineapple, which is strapped to here now. I'm going to go in, into camera and I can see what it sees now. In fact, there's, uh, I'll go ahead and hit record. And look, there's Paul. Hi, Paul. And uh, from here, I can see my battery life and how I've connected to satellites. And so I've got a green connection. I've got seven satellites in the sky, so it will use GPS to, uh, to fly. And at this point, I pretty much need to uh, press in to turn on my rotors. I'm going to wait for Shannon to get up in the sky. And then when she's going, I'm going to flip on my pineapple. And I've set it up with a boot mode to go ahead and launch my denial of drone attack. So it looks like she's flying there. I reach down here and flip on my pineapple. And away we go. All right. I'm going to send that right over to Shannon. Let's see how it does. So right now, the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark V is just booting up. And as soon as it's done booting, I've got the dip switches set in such a way that it's going to execute my uh, my drone pwn script. And as soon as it does that, it'll do all the magic. So let me get near the AR drone. <laughs> it's going to attack. Oh, boy. I'm scared. What is it going to do to me? Please don't hurt my AR drone. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I got yeah. an AR drone over here. What do you got? Yeah, I've got the Phantom going. How are you? Phantom. How's the How's the handling on that guy? Pretty good. There's a little bit of turbulence since it's kind of windy out here, but not too bad. I actually find that if I put the Phantom above the parrot, it'll totally knock it down. What? Yeah. Oh! What was that? <laughs> what? Uh, it's okay. It's got All a right. fail safe. It reboots. But not for long. Actually, this is what I was talking about. Look at this. Oh, oh, that's not even cool. That's not even cool. <laughs> oh, man. We should get some insurance. Seriously, I need some life insurance up in here. Oh, thanks a lot, man. Okay. Thanks. I'm thanks. gonna let the script do its thing. Okay. All I have to do is be within range of her drone, and the script is just gonna continually loop. Her failsafe brings it back up into the sky, but in just a moment here, um, it's gonna reconnect and do its magic. So I'm just going to wait right here. Whee! <laughs> Has that Make been 60 it's seconds? Happy? It's getting there. Oh. oh! You killed my drone! Yes, I did. Man. Cool. Not cool, man. I object. So I noticed with my AR drone, every time it dropped out of the sky, it would come back up after a couple of seconds. It does, and that's because uh, I found when I, you know, telneted in and first started hacking on this, that it actually has a fail-safe program. So what I'm doing is I kill the control program, and then very similar to the way that we do it on the pineapple, where you just have a keep alive script, it kicks in and restarts the program. Um, so you're just using Telnet to kill it? Yeah, in fact, it is, you know, as simple as any other embedded Linux device. It's actually running an Athero system on a chip, very similar to the pineapple. That's so hilarious. it's like they're brothers or something. And yeah, it, it seeks out the SSID of okay. the AR drones, it connects and associates, and then it just Telnet's in and kills the control program. Uh, I could as well kill the, you know, control program respawner, but I figured, ag, it's more fun and annoying as a denial of drone attack to let it come back up only to kill it again. Now, I noticed that um, Telnet's pretty similar to Netcat in some ways. It, in some ways it is. In fact, you could even use Netcat to control this um, using UDP packets. The TACU option in Netcat allows you to uh, send UDP packets. That's basically what your phone is doing. Okay. Uh, when you tell it to go forward, you're sending a UDP packet constantly over and over and over again with an incremented sequence number saying, go forward, go forward, go forward. And so uh, that's actually... Oh my gosh. What, what? 
You could you could steal my parrot. I could. I could actually instead of just making a drop out of the sky, I could send oh, it no. the packets to say take this altitude and go this way or whatever. Oh man, that's so screwed up. Sammy Kamkar <laughs> actually did a proof of concept called Skyjacking that inspired all of this. He did his on a Raspberry Pi and he used a Node.js framework to do the control for it. I prefer to just kind of go ahead and tell that in and kill the program because yeah. it's just fun to watch it fall out of the sky. And I just love that the uh, the DJI is killing the uh, parrot. Oh, but, you know, that's hilarious. just me. Um, now, I know that all of these depend on open Wi-Fi. At least the Air Drone does. No, they both do, in fact. Uh, oh, the Air wow. Drone is, I mean, in fact, it's highly hackable because it is an open network. You can tell that right in. They didn't lock this down in any yeah. way. There's a software development kit for those UDP packets. They're just AT commands that you send to, to tell to do stuff. It's super easy, and they, they make it hackable. But um, but Why I don't. Why do people do this? But it's, it's, <laughs> but they it's both consumer use open products. Wi -Fi. They should not be using open Wi-Fi. Well, I think the difference is, um, I mean, the AR drone people. These are cool guys out of France that are like yeah. into like the hacking community in that that sense. But yeah. they are actually both using. In fact, this right here on the end of my transmitter is an open Wi-Fi um, repeater. Essentially, oh, okay. the camera on that guy is a. You know, it's basically a wireless network camera yeah. that repeats its signal over to this, and then that's what connects to this. And the reason for all of this is that consumers have phones and they're used to open networks, yeah. and it's just like built in. It's it's like, you know, if you're launching a product, it's super simple to set up a control mechanism over open Wi-Fi. Oh, that's terrible. Well, Nobody cares. Well, it's yeah, it's consumer stuff. They don't yeah. care about security. And, you know, if security means that you might potentially get a support call, like, oh, I don't know how to... You know, set up my grandkids drone what's this password thingy they're just not going to do it that's so bad well what i really want to see is the code behind this you want to dig into the code yes let's right. do it right after this it doesn't matter if you're a whale or a nuclear vessel when you have that killer idea you need to grab yourself a domain name and web hosting fast and with domain.com's quick domain discovery system and their easy checkout process you're gonna have your website up and running in no time I mean I love domain.com because they're affordable they're reliable they're easy to use and they're huge on social media it really just makes it a great customer experience a really fun place to do business and the guys over at domain.com are huge fans of hack5 so they want to hook you up use the coupon code hack5 at check out and get an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. And we're back with the trivia question of the week. Last week's trivia question was, if you're a victim of a Smurf attack, you're a victim of what? And the answer was a denial of service attack. Now this week's trivia question is, what year did Ivan Sutherland create the first head-mounted VR and augmented reality display system? And you can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 swag. 